Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. If you want to list the files in a directory, then you typically use, at least I typically used for a long time, the os list dir, dir, uh, function. Let's say import os, os for operating system, os list dir, uh, let's say Etsy, and I get back a list of files there. The thing is, what if I only want the configuration files there? So I can try saying os lister of slash etc star.conf, and this will not work. It'll say no such file was found. And this might seem strange if you're coming from, say, the Unix shell, or I guess even Windows, where you're used to using star, the asterisk, to indicate a wildcard. And that's because os lister doesn't do wildcards. All it does is take literally what you gave it and try to list that file or that directory. If we want to do wildcards and other sorts of things, well, it might seem to you like we're using regular expressions. We're actually not. We're using something known as file name globbing. And no, I did not make that name up. And globbing is the special kind of interpretation that we have in the shell for star, for question mark, and even for square brackets. So what I can do is I can say import glob, and yes, glob comes with the Python standard library. So you just have to import it no matter what version of Python you have from the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. And then you can say glob.glob .glob of slash etc star.conf. And first of all, it works, right? That's a good starting point. It works. Second of all, um, it gives me not just the file name, the naked file name, but it also gives me the full path, which I find really useful and nice when I want to iterate over files in a directory. So the first nice thing about glob.glob .glob, uh, is that it allows you to use patterns like that. And you can do all sorts of things. You say glob, so star means I match anything. Glob.glob .glob of, let's say, slash etc, slash, and I can say here something like star f, uh, question mark, f star.conf. And what that means is it must have an F in the second character. So the first character could be anything, second character must be F, and then we'll have any characters we want until .conf. So if you're looking for a specific kind of pattern, this can actually help you with that. So glob does star, glob does question mark, glob also does square brackets. So I can say glob.glob, .glob, and let's say I want all of the files that begin with uh, abcde.conf. So I can say abcde, Star dot, oops, star dot conf. And now notice what I did. Well, I guess there aren't that many. Let's add a few more F G H I J K L. There we go, a few more. And what this means is we want to get one of these characters. So it's similar to question mark, and that question mark is one character, but it's different in that it's one of these characters. And if you know regular expressions, this looks really familiar, but it's still not quite the same because a regular expression with square brackets and then star right after it means something completely and utterly different. So they're close, they're using similar syntax, but they're not quite the same. So glob is really smart about being able to handle um, star, question mark, and square brackets. But it gets even better than that. Because basically, I can do glob.glob. .glob. Let's do that. Uh, uh, let's do my home directory, users, Rincon. All right, and I'm going to say star.conf. And there are not any there, strangely enough. But I can also say here, recursive equals true. Well, OK, there's still none there. But if there had been, <laughs> it would have found them. I don't know, let's find text files. Right now it's going to find, oh, well, use, oh, because using Ruben, fine. There we go. And actually all of these are in uh, the main directory. So the recursive equals true didn't really help. But if I had subdirectories in which I had text files, then it would have helped there. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, what if I'm going to get back a really large number of results? Um, and typically everything in Python 2 that returned a list in Python 3 returns an iterator. And that's because an iterator doesn't give you all the results at once at a list, rather it gives it to you one at a time, but you can request it in a for loop or some other sort of iterator. So this is exactly the same with glob. You might worry that you're going to get so many results that it'll just overwhelm the system. Well, guess what? We can do glob.iglob. And iGlob gives you back a generator object. And a generator is a special kind of object that um, knows how to behave inside of a, a for loop or other sort of iteration. And then you can say something like for one file name in that print one file name. And sure enough, it's going to give me all of those things back. Um, the one final thing you might be worried about, and this really has never, never been an issue for me, but what if I have your file name? 
equals my star file.txt. Can such a file exist? Yeah, absolutely, right? Just because star and question mark and square brackets are special to glob and special to most shells, you can in theory, I don't recommend it, but you can in theory create a file name with these file with these characters in them. So what do you do then? Well, you can say glob.escape a file name. And then it's smart enough to do what's necessary here. It's using square brackets around the star to say, actually, this is not a star. This could be anything at all. Now, if you're really, really foolish and you have, say, square brackets in your file name as well, let's see what glob escape file name does then. Right then, oh, ugly, horrible, but, but it works. All right, so the glob module, definitely worth getting to know, definitely worth using. I use glob.glob .glob all the time. And not only is it useful, uh, not only is it uh, great, but it's also really fun to say glob, 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 glob. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember that if you have any questions, you can send them to me via email or on Twitter. I always am happy to get questions from viewers. Also, if you want to get a free article every week, my Better Developers newsletter goes out to about 20,000 people a week right now. Sign up at betterdevelopersweekly.com. Thanks a lot, and I'll be back soon with another video.